In this inspired insider.com interview, we talk with Irmis Pirade. He's the co-founder of Pipe Drive. He talks about his life and death experiences. At the same time, he was getting married, he was having a major surgery, and they were going to incorporate Pipe Drive in the US from Estonia. He talks about his journey, that and much more coming up now. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com. I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. And today we have Irmas Pierde, who's one of the co-founders of PipeDrive, which is a sales and pipeline management software. It's easy to use. I use it probably daily. They have almost 10,000 paying customers in over 100 countries worldwide. Some of their customers include HubSpot, Samsung, Discovery Channel, and many more. Um, Irmas has trained more than 10,000 salespeople in thousands of companies over 10 years, and some of his customers included Price Waterhouse, Toyota, Coca-Cola. Uh, Irmas, thank you so much for, for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate I it. You know, a lot of people go through tough times and they have things standing in their way, personal issues, money, health. And the question is, how do we overcome what seems to be insurmountable in the midst of running a business? You know, oftentimes we don't talk about the health stuff or or yeah. the big mistakes or big challenges. We talk about the high points. So I'm so happy to have you talk about some of the big challenges. And when I heard kind of what you went through, I knew we had to talk and you had to tell people about it. And I always like to include a fun fact. A fun fact about you is you're a certified firewalking instructor. Mm, How did that good. come about and, and what do you do with that? Uh, I think I got certified uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, one of um, really famous uh, motivational speakers, Anthony, uh, Robbins used to do that, mm -hmm. and my friend Pip, uh, we were running a sales training uh, company with uh, Timo, yeah. uh, uh, my co-founder in Pipedrive right now, uh, uh, training business back then, and uh, Pip got really curious, how, how is he doing that firewalking thing? Right. So he, he looked up who was the trainer of Anthony Robbins. Uh, got his contacts, contacted him. His name was Tolly Birken. So uh, the guy invited us over. So uh, we got certified, me and Pip, back then, I think it was 2001 in uh, Florida. So we, we, it was curiosity first. Which so what attracted you to do the firewalking? Why not just go to the seminar and, and try it there? Why did you want to get certified? Because... Uh, uh, we wanted to use that during our trainings as well. And first, uh, it was there was something really, um, how do I say, it was too interesting just to just to uh, do it once and then mm -hmm. uh, never realize what is it really right. about. So, what did you learn? What did you learn from getting certified as a firewalker? I learned how to pay attention. That's the biggest uh, thing you can learn, I think, from a firewalking event. First thing you learn, actually, is how to conquer your fears, because it's really natural to be scared before you oh, start. Oh, for sure. Piping hot yes. coals? Yes. I don't want to yes. walk on those. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so you learn more about your... Uh, fears and how to uh, deal with emotions, yeah. but if you have done that for uh, several times already, um, uh, you realize that it, it's actually, uh, even if you have walked hundreds of times before, mm -hmm. you still have to do it like you are doing it for the first time. Yeah. You really have to pay attention uh, if you are, uh, if you think that you, you are going to get burned too early, yeah. you are, and you think that, oh, it's nothing, that's also a very arrogant way of looking at it, and you will also get severe burns. Keeps you humble. So, yes, you yeah. have to have that, that humble attitude, and uh, 
then uh, pay attention on your thoughts that I will be fine. My yeah. body will do whatever it needs to do to protect me and it will be fine. So it's yeah. a it's ultimate uh, exercise how to really yeah. uh, be focused. So how did you conquer your fears then? Uh, before firewalking? No, with the firewalking. Uh, it's the a, a, a exercise. When, when you have done it uh, once or twice or mm -hmm. five times or ten times or a hundred times, you're, you get a better how to say, realization yeah. what is fear yeah. and when should I stop. When you are witnessing your fear, yeah. what is really, a, how to say, what are the fears you should um, you should take seriously and what, what fears because, because, you because don't have to pay attention to. Fear could be just, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, also, fear could be, um, uh, there's one way of describing fear is, is to describe it with acronyms. Yeah. Uh, false evidence appearing real. Right. All the fears are uh, illusional. They are not, yeah. there's, not, there's, there's nothing behind them. Yeah. You are just show your own negative thoughts. Yeah. Um, and some fears are really, um, and there's another acronym, is fuck everything and run. Right. Uh, but, but there, are, there are some things you should avoid. So, so making a difference, which, which is it? Yeah. Uh, that's the, that's yeah. the learning point. For yeah, usually, you know, Irmas, for the fun fact, I just say it, we talk about it for a second, but I feel this is so important because the whole theme of this is almost like conquering fears. And... You know, when people find out kind of your story and what happened, they'll realize, but there's one thing of conquering your own fears. When you're an instructor, you help people, other people conquer their fears, right? So what do yes. you do to help others? Because people may be experiencing, they may be scared just to get on the phone to make a sales call. They may be scared to ask for money. So yes. what did you do to help others as an instructor conquer their fears? Almost nothing, actually. Uh, the... Uh, we only had one hour before they actually started to walk, right. so we made that fire together, right. um, and then while it was burning down to hot coals, right. uh, we we talked. And usually, and that's why it's a good exercise. Mm -hmm. We even though we talked about fears, um, uh, this fire is like a great. Um, how do you say metaphor? Fire, fire walking is a great metaphor. Mm -hmm. So when actually you have to walk on fire, you don't need to think about fears. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no fears, no fears, no fears. You think about that, that fire and mm -hmm. uh, getting across those hot uh, coals. And uh, while you do that, you also uh, conquer your fears mm -hmm. without thinking about your fears, actually. So, so it's, a, it's, it's a great exercise. So did you have someone who just didn't want to do it and you had to kind of talk them off the, the edge? No. That's the, that's the point. It should, uh, that should be... Uh, uh, that, that's, that's his or her decision whether he or she you. should walk or not. Because you. if you feel that you shouldn't, then you shouldn't. Got it. And that you should uh, trust your gut feeling. Got and it. When, you're, when you feel that you want to that then you should go because your gut feeling usually is right. Got it. Got it. So what about something where you know that you, you don't want to do it, but you should do it? Like someone's scared to make pick up the phone and make a sales call. It's very, uh, it's very similar. Um, uh, you can ask yourself that, that what's, what's really the worst thing? What can happen here? Mm -hmm. Really? Really, what's the worst thing? For example, making a phone call. The, usually, the first thing is where well, we know it. It's just the customer says that, that right. he's not interested. But we, we, it may sound sound funny, but that, that we had same exercise with the fire as well. That, that we told them that, that, that the worst thing what can happen that just you you uh, maybe we need to go to the hospital. <laughs> you can burn your feet just, just, yeah. Yes, because that, right. that happens. But really, but it happens. So mm -hmm. when you accept that worst outcome, it, that could happen. Yeah, that's really, that's, that's kind of bad. So even. you have to accept the worst outcome Yes. also. Yes, yeah. and, and th then you can act. Because if you're not accepting the worst outcome, that fear really starts uh, really doing bad yeah. things on you. You can't, you can't act anymore. Yes, that's a good, I like that, yeah. 
Think of what the worst outcome is and accept it um, if you can. Like, it was a expect, uh, sorry, expect the best, but uh, plan for the worst. For worst. Yes. So, Irmas, tell me, you know, I know you had, you had an interesting childhood. What, where, where are you from? Tell people what it was like growing up. I was growing up in Estonia. Uh, capital of Estonia is Tallinn, and it's country right next to uh, Russia. So, my childhood happened while uh, Soviet Union was collapsing. So, uh, my, uh, or my first, I, I earned my first uh, pocket money in rubles, but when I was already, uh, let's say, 16 years, of, 16 year olds, we already had our own money, crowns, Estonian mm -hmm. crowns. So, so um, it was a big change back then. We had this new shiny thing called capitalism. Um, we, uh, before that, we saw it only from Finnish TV. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had no clue what capitalism is or was back then. And uh, uh, what I was it like before capitalism? Like, so people may may not even understand or kind of experience it. What was what did the landscape look like before capitalism? For a kid, um, first. Um, if you're a small kid, maybe there's not too much difference. The, mm -hmm. the we had a lot less toys, and uh, mm -hmm. after the school, when Pop told me that please go to the store and get some milk, some sometimes I had to remember my my worst trip to store. I had to wait eight hours to get just a one pack wow. of milk. So so there's not much stuff in stores, but that's kind of scary though. As a that, child, yes, but I but I had no way to compare it with something else. I that thought was just it's like a kind of normal. Got and it. Uh, I saw from TV that oh, for some reason, other countries they have a lot of stuff in stores. So no, no clue. How is that possible? <laughs> how do you so, how do you actually eat though if you are waiting eight hours for just a carton of milk and there's not much in stores? What do you do? Uh, well, um, you when you when you can. You buy what you can. You had to figure out a way uh, how to store. For example, I remember my, my dad was storing uh, sugar. Uh, we had like maybe 50 kilograms of sugar at one point. So, so um, because uh, it happened that during next let's say year there was no chance to buy sugar. We right. so really had to. Have a plan. They like ration it out. Yeah. Yes. 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 Wow. I remember my, my dad was really uh, mad at me when he realized that that, that uh, I made candies from that sugar. <laughs> what did you do with the candies? We just ate them. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe I sold a few as well, but we we just poured sugar on a pan and then made it liquid and made candies. It was, it was a real deficit. It was a really. Um, there was not much sugar available in stores, and I made candy from that. So, what was it like after capitalism then? Uh, For you, after capitalism, mm, first uh, um, uh, few small stories uh, I can remember. I can remember earning my first uh, earnings. I remember that that, that uh, as in Tallinn, as Finland was so close to us. We were able to watch Finnish TV, um, and I took uh, black and white pictures from TV screen mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, from maybe you uh, have heard about uh, uh, Night Rider. Sure. Yeah, I made pictures of that. Uh, David Hasselhoff and his car. Yes. It and then there was a MacGyver. I like that. I love that show, MacGyver. Yeah, yeah. it's a very and Battlestar Galactica when I was even younger a bit. So I made those pictures. And we developed them in our uh, kitchen with uh, my dad, yeah. and then I sold them in school. Oh wow! One one ruble a piece, black and white pictures. So, so I earned my my first rubles right uh, there. So it was funny. It was not uh, it was not illegal um, anymore. 
to uh, do great stuff and sell it. There were there were first companies forming in Estonia uh, back then, selling uh, uh, hamburgers which no one ever saw before. So our business is evolving. I, I remember um, I was into the computers. Our our school got maybe one of the first uh, Apple computers oh, wow. in the whole Soviet Union. Wow. For sure, and all the schools didn't have it. We had one Apple II computer. Uh, U.S. exchange students uh, gave it to us, so it was a, it was a big thing to see a uh, Apple computer. So that, that that's how capitalism arrived. So was a lot electronics hard to come by because it, you're waiting eight hours in line for milk, but you have a TV and a camera. Was that hard to come by? How did you acquire that? <coughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It was uh, hard to get that kind of um, <coughs> stuff from stores. You had to really check the stores every now and then. And when there was a, when there was some, when the, for example, when they were selling, uh, let's say, CD players, that was a, immediately that was a rumor. That, hey, they are selling CD players now, and so everyone went to ah, did you? I didn't have enough money, or someone said that, 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 that we got one. Our our dad had like fifty rubles, and we we bought a CD player. So, so it was uh, yeah. rare uh, to have modern technology. Yeah. So I was, in, I was in good school. So our our school had a really um, our school had some computers, but that was rare. Yeah, Irma, So tell tell us um, you know some of the big roadblocks you ran up against in personally. And in business, mm -hmm. I know there's a big personal one. Can you uh, share that? Uh, yes, I think one of the biggest personal uh, roadblocks uh, kind of arrived uh, on 2011. Uh, I remember we uh, had just founded uh, uh, Pipe Drive. Few months before that and I remember because I was working at two places at the same time I was still working at the uh, Wine and Partners which was a training business um, we had with uh, Timo and Pip uh, to make a living it was a big company back then already uh, um, one, of the, one of the biggest in, in Baltics and then also we had a startup which seemed to take off, and it was I was I was really 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 exhausted uh, because it, it it felt that it's impossible to continue like that. Because pipe drive with pipe drive maybe we earned only um, few of maybe few hundred bucks per month for the whole team. So because if your pricing is thirty bucks per receipt. Um, and you have company running, and you have just maybe like ten customers. It's yeah. really, and you realize that, that even if you are uh, doubling every month, it's still a really um, long road. If, if even doubling every week, it, it's still a really. You have to have a lot of patience to arrive to, a, to that success. So, so I was really exhausted, and my uh, my wife. Uh, she was not my wife uh, back then. Uh, Asked, uh, but we already uh, had kids, so she asked me that, that, that. So what? So what? What are you going to do? That because you're, you're obviously very, very exhausted. And I told her that that that, that I I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. And then I remember she repeated that question. That, that but really, what's your plan? I'm sure you have some kind of plan. And I said that, gee, I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any plans. I just, I'm so exhausted. So I had no you idea. You were so exhausted that you just yes. didn't need, you were going through, just trying yeah. to get through I, both. I was, yes. I was uh, kind of semi excited. I was excited to see that happening, that we were just, I just started a new company, which customers seemed to like, but I didn't have um, a lot of excitement because I was so, so exhausted. Mm hmm. Because if you have a, a fa family with five members, 
So you had three kids at the time? Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, actually, actually uh, four, but the oldest one was living with uh, his mom. So, so but you need a budget for five member family. You just can't uh, switch to startup life just yeah. like that. Yeah. So I had no clue what to do with that situation. So um, uh, I had no idea what was coming because in, in just a few weeks, my brain tumor, uh, I knew about my brain tumor before, but doctors told that it's stable. You, you can just uh, 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 watch and wait how it behaves. How did you know you had it before? Five or six years before. Uh, I lost hearing from the left ear, uh -huh. and then the uh, MRI showed that, that I have a benign and slow-growing tumor, tumor uh -huh. that you can continue your, your uh, life and, and work. We just need to keep Watch an eye it. on you. That if it gets worse, then we must act. So, so did you still have hearing? Did you have hearing loss in that ear, like from that yes. time? Yeah. Yes. So um, I was really not paying attention on my health um, back then uh, because I had these two projects uh, going on. Right. So in, in a few weeks uh, after that discussion, uh, this brain tumor got really severe. Uh, there was uh, uh, some critical things happening and I couldn't walk in a really? few weeks. I had serious vertigo. Um, uh, I couldn't go to work anymore. I couldn't uh, uh, conduct trainings anymore. I I was able to continue with pipe drive because I didn't uh, had uh, because uh, I had the chance to work behind the table or from home. Right. But I couldn't uh, train other sales guys because I could barely walk. So that that was a huge <laughs> roadblock. Back then. So what did you do then? Um, At the time I you couldn't walk and you were getting vertigo, it's hard to go about your day-to-day -day life. Uh, Especially with kids too. It was. Um, I realized, um, my doctor told me that, that you have uh, three months, uh, that, that, uh, not until you die, but three months uh, until you must decide what's your what's your what's your action and we are recommending a surgery we yeah. could do it uh, like right now and I, I asked that, that, that as I want uh, so badly to uh, um, cure myself with the alternative medicine I had some options what did you do I, uh, I was uh, I, because I, I was on a raw food before and the raw food stopped a tumor twice really uh, yes so but only raw like only fruits and vegetables uh, and raw meat and as raw, well. Raw meat. Yeah. Oh wow! So I remembered from that that, that that this raw food really had some powers. But uh, I also I was off from my diet uh, back then, so I, I was kind of careless. Because you're working around the clock, you're stressed, you're probably yes. just eating whatever. Yes, yes, yes. And then I realized that that, that uh, to make that raw food thing working, it takes months again. I might not I might not have enough time. Yeah. So I tried uh, MMS, uh, I can look it up from the internet, uh, it's a li liquid you, you can drink. And so I took some uh, therapies, I flew over to Brazil to some shamanic uh, rituals. Uh, so I was really you tried uh, anything. doing my best yeah. uh, to heal myself. But the doctors told me, I thought, okay, you can do whatever you want, uh, but, but uh, in, in, in July, latest you, you must if you, if it's not better we must um, um, we, sh we should you should have a surgery otherwise you're going to die because it's going to wow. it's, even though it's a benign tumor there's just not enough room in your head anymore right. so we gotta get get it out because uh, it's going to pressure on the nerves which are work which um, my heart and uh, lungs are using so you just Serious. You, you can wake up and realize that you're dead. <laughs> so, so it was getting more and more dangerous. Yeah. So, so I knew that uh, I have to have some kind of plan. So I had, I, I had some plans. 
uh, plan B and plan C uh, and so on. So, so right before that uh, operation, my operation was on 12th July, obviously I, I took that operation. I did an MRI scan one day before mm -hmm. to understand how my alternative thing thing is working, and then it was working because uh, from the scan I could see that, that the the uh, the tumor cells were dying. It shrunk. The tumor. Uh, no, it didn't shrunk, but the cells were dying. It would it would turn black. Um, oh, doctor told. Me. So even though it was working, I, I still didn't had enough time because. Uh, it might take um, months until it really goes away, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I had days. Doctors told me that, that uh, we should take it out right now. Wow. So I, I'll never know if uh, I had a chance to cure myself, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I totally had an option to stay alive. And uh, uh, without kids and family, I might have taken that risk really when I yes it's possible but uh, but my friends and I remember my brother telling me that and that uh, and I look at my kids and it's feel like obvious why do I need to take that risk there's a actually there, there is a door right yeah they told me that. Um, why I was hesitating yeah. uh, they told me that, that you probably it's going to affect your facial nerves so it's a really big chance that you're going to be paralyzed. Your left uh, side of the face is going to be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And as I was a, a trainer, uh, a speaker, I, um, that was not an option for me. At mm -hmm. least that, that's what I thought. Because it looks fine to me right now. Yeah, it, it, it took uh, uh, about a year to uh, recover uh to uh maybe 50 or 60 percent what it was before so right it's fine right now yeah it was uh, much worse uh it was totally paralyzed right uh, after the the operation so so that, that that's the thing i did with the health also why why it was terrifying was that, that we had uh, uh many plans for that july uh, uh with PyPry, for example, we were thinking about uh, uh, founding a new US entity, PyPry Inc., here um, uh, to start some fundraising. Mm -hmm. Also, I was uh, planning to get married in July. Wow. I was planning to move from city to back country. And then it seemed that, that, that instead of all of those things, I need to get, get a surgery. Wow. But um, but uh, as, I, as, as, as I felt that depression before the operation, and I remembered my lessons from the uh, depression I had like five or six years before that, I, my lesson from that was that you, just, you should never stop. Uh, um, you, should, you should keep going. That there's, there's no vacation is going to help you out if you have a severe depression or... Mm -hmm. Or a bad situation going on. So I remember from that that, that, that I should still uh, keep doing all the things we are doing. So I told to my co-founders that the best thing you could do uh, with PyDrive is that let's keep going. Let's still uh, get incorporated in the US. And uh, with uh, my wife, we were still planning to get married, even though I almost couldn't uh, walk. So in July, we, all, we did all those things. Oh, really? I got, I got married. Before the I surgery, did. you did all that? Before surgery, yes. One week before the surgery, surgery, I got married. During the surgery, uh, we uh, moved from city to back country. Um, and uh, we also, during the surgery, we uh, founded that Pipe Drive Inc. Wow. right here in, in California. So, so we, we, we did all that. Yeah. Uh, everything happened at once for you. Yes, in July. Wow. So my, my busy, busiest and worst months and best months right. ever. Right. No. Yes. Really highs and really lows. So yes. just to give people an idea, what was it like, like right before the surgery and what was it like after? Because it's, you know, all the anticipation has got to be difficult too. Yes. 
um, it was really bad before and really bad after <laughs> as well. It was really bad before because, like I told, I wanted to cure myself. So I felt that I'm a uh, that's a fail if I'm going to use a surgery. I know it sounds weird, maybe yeah. right now, uh, but I really want to. Why uh, was that? So Why were you so set on the natural as opposed to the surgery? Because it's, it's something uh, what I really believe that I still believe in, mm -hmm. and I want to have more control over my life, mm -hmm. like most of us do. So mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. just sort of not accepting See. that that uh, there are things outside from my uh, control. Right. Plus, I was really not accepting that um, possibility that I'm going to be paralyzed from my yeah. face. So that that was really unacceptable. But, but my life seemed to be uh, more valuable. Thank you. Uh, and uh, and that's why I did it. Um, but the maybe the worst was still after the operation because I was really really. Uh, depressed after the first days after the operation, I was, uh, I felt good because I survived. Right, because uh, there was a chance you don't wake up. Uh, it was a small chance, but still. Really? Yes. Even with the brain surgery? Yes. Oh, wow. The doctor said that it's, uh, don't be afraid of that. It's. Uh, That's because they're not getting the surgery. They're not getting the surgery, <laughs> so that they don't. Have to <laughs> yeah, for me it was still terrifying. But well, yeah, yeah. The, so, so a few days after the operation, the depression started to kick in. Again, mm -hmm. as I realized that that that, uh, that that happened, that I was paralyzed from my face, and no one uh, knew if it's going to recover ever. Mm -hmm. I realized that that now it's uh, it's uh, impossible for me to continue working uh, as a trainer. I was I kind of felt lucky that. Uh, uh, thank God we started that pipe drive because without that I wouldn't have any uh, anything uh, going on with my uh, uh, business life. But be but because uh, be because of the depression, it was hard to be to feel lucky uh, with anything. I, 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 maybe even lottery ticket. Uh, I felt like nothing almost. Yeah. So, so um, uh, I remember I had those talks weeks after the operation with a girl called uh, Crystal. Uh, she's dead right now. As, as oh uh, she died unfortunately oh. a few years ago. Sorry to hear that. She 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 had back then. She had like six brain. Uh, cancer operations, wow. and uh, and I was whining uh, over the phone uh, at the, the, the time. So I'm depressed. How did you know her? Was she a friend or? Yeah, uh, friends. Uh, we had some mutual friends, so they mm -hmm. hooked us up. Yeah. We we only met uh, once, but we had several yeah. phone calls. So when I was whining that that, that uh, I'm depressed and I don't know what to do, and uh, I kind of. Uh, uh, have the, this pipe drive still going on and I know I should feel lucky but I don't feel uh, because of this and that mm -hmm. and then she told me that that, that, that uh, you're kidding that, that, that uh, you're one of the toughest guys I ever uh, seen I mean you're within the same month you're you're Founding a company and moving and getting married and right after the surgery you're still working. Um, we uh, we applied to an accelerator called Angel Path back then, right after my surgery, maybe like a few weeks. Mm -hmm. We got accepted. Um, so I was planning to fly to uh, California in September yeah. uh, already, and uh, she said that you're 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 a tough guy. You, it's amazing how how lucky you are, and I tried to uh, convince her that, that I'm not a tough guy. Because, and then I realized that, that oh my god, what am I? I I'm I'm trying to convince someone that I'm not uh, tough at all. So mm -hmm. this is that was one of the turning points where I realized that, that how 
how my own how, how powerful my own negative thoughts are and this what what kind of self talk is actually yeah. going on because because uh, then I realized that, that uh, my friends had the same talk to me my my wife that that you're a tough guy don't worry about that that everything's going well but that 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 didn't felt real didn't sink they, in they, they, yes because they had no idea what 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 it is to have a brain surgery but right. she had like six of them and she was still very very positive she's she was one of the most positive uh, uh people i have ever met yeah. and she told me and uh, i kind of felt that, that i'm not allowed to whine uh when uh persons like her are around yeah so 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 I had many turning points, but I think that that phone call yeah. with her back then um, was one of the most important uh, turning points. Mm -hmm. that, that I should pay attention what kind of thoughts I having about myself. Yeah. So so uh, I just uh, step by step uh, every day, this is success or. Uh, realization that, that that actually it's a great thing to be alive ne it never arrived like suddenly it kind of woke you up yes we, we went to the angel pad in san francisco i attended to investor meetings with the funny wow. glasses because so I how far how long after the surgery did you actually you because so, you're at this point you're in estonia right i was in estonia yes and so these meetings are in san francisco Yes, so I think it was uh, two months after the surgery. So, so Only two months? Wow. Something, yes, because the, the accelerator started uh, then. So, so um, uh, I still didn't have my face working. Right. Um, I couldn't hear from the left ear. I had to use tape before I went to sleep because my eyelid was It not, would dry out. It, I, I couldn't blink my left uh, eye. I was attending in four months in October already investor meetings with the funny classes where, where one, one uh, uh, glass was uh, made of clear glass, another one was black, so I was, I was looking like a pirate on those meetings. No one ever asked it, that uh, what is going on with No one ever you? asked. Uh, yeah, because I because I uh, because I looked like a pirate. <laughs> so then, then my brother and also the the founder of Ancient Bad told me that that Urbus you should get rid of those pirate glasses, just wear normal shades even uh, even when you're inside the room if you want to. Yeah. Uh, so so I started doing that. Yeah. So I I started to be more okay with uh, who I am over mm -hmm. the over the weeks. Two and months doesn't seem like a lot of time between brain surgery and then traveling all the way to the U.S. <laughs> to go to these investor meetings. Um, Did they recommend you not do that, or doctor doctors told me that 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 if I want to do that, that's fine. Okay. I just felt that, that uh, it's impossible for me to sit at home. Yeah. I just need to uh, uh, keep going. Yeah. Just need to do that. Yeah, that sounds... So what was the... And, you know, we go to the fundraising part, which is, you know, um, a lot of work in itself. What... Just to transition from that, now you go and you go to AngelPad. What's the process like to get into AngelPad? It was, uh, we had to apply first. We were among uh, thousands of uh, applicants and uh, there was an uh, interview. I, I had that interview from my home from Estonia. Uh, uh, I think that happened just uh, a few weeks after the surgery. Were your so co-founders we, 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 already moved there at this point, or no, one of our co-founders was uh, was here in the uh -huh. U.S. Mm -hmm. I live in the U.S. now, yeah. uh, in California. So one of our founders was uh, here, um, and four of us we were in Estonia. So we, we had a video conference, video uh, Skype call, uh, all five founders with uh, founders of Ancient Path mm -hmm. back then. I remember that that was my first, I would say, public appearance after the uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt really weird for me. 
but yeah. it, it worked. We got accepted. Uh, we were among 0.75% because they out from those thousands, they only chose uh, 15 teams. We, yeah. we were really proud back then. I was really proud back then. I mean, at that point, you had customers, right? I mean, you had a lot of customers, didn't you? Yes, yes. We, 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 we didn't have a lot of customers. We had some customers. I think that, that uh, when we got accepted, we had uh, maybe 60 or 80 mm -hmm. customers. We were getting closer to 100. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what was it like when you moved? Because then you moved to the U.S., right? For two months, yes. Yeah. So, With my, all the co-founders. What what is it like living here compared to to Estonia? It's much warmer. <laughs> Not where I am. I'm in Chicago. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the, the uh, was there any culture shock because your kids came too, and so they only knew Estonia, and now they're here in the U.S. What's it like? No shock, no shock really, um, no. for me because uh, I I. Ten years before that, I was selling books in the U.S. door to door as a sales guy. Mm -hmm. uh, um, for kids, it was a shock, but a positive mm -hmm. one. For them, it was like a big adventure to right. another uh, country. Mm -hmm. Biggest change, I think, was the climate and the and the California. Mm -hmm. So, how did the Russ, How did that event change you? What do you do differently now because of what happened here? Um, it's hard to say if I'm changed because, um, uh, don't get me wrong, I, I don't believe in uh, that the person can change, but I, I believe that, that uh, anyone can change their uh, behavior and, mm -hmm. uh, and know more about who you truly are. So I think I know more about myself now. I mean, I'm in uh, better contact with my true self. Mm -hmm. I'm so so, so I, I hope there's no way I can prove even to myself that uh, I that that I, I'm a better person or mm -hmm. or uh, I have a better contact with myself because it's uh, there's no way to prove it. Mm -hmm. So so there are only hopes or some evidences to myself. So I hope that at the time there are two things which I hope that I have gained. One is that that um, I think. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's two things, seems to be two things, but actually it's, it's the same thing. I, th I think I'm depending less on my emotions. I have a way better understanding how to deal with uh, strong um, emotions. For mm -hmm. example, a fear mm -hmm. uh, is a really strong emotion. It's yeah. easy to, to panic. Uh, I remember my worst fears. And I, I still have them because because what I've learned is that, that that's the second thing I learned that that, that uh, life is a really fragile thing. You can lose it just like that any mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's something that's something which which changed me even more than surgery uh, happened before surgery. It's right after when I heard that I have a brain tumor. I took a flight to uh, Brazil to uh, attend uh, some shamanic rituals, and when I was flying back to Estonia. I stopped in Rio de Janeiro and I decided to uh, go to swim and I uh, made a, uh, some bad choices there because I, I uh, was walking on Ipanema beach and then I thought, oh, here's a uh, nice spot because there was, uh, not my, there was less crowded. Uh, later, I saw that the reason why it was less crowded was there were signs that no swimming here because there was a, some strong uh, drafts, but I never saw that sign then. So I just uh, undressed and uh, went swimming there. So while I was swimming, I started to realize that, that hey, oh, wow, there's some interesting draft going on here. So I tried to swim back, but uh, I couldn't. I, I realized that. The, Draft is too strong. It took wow. me further away to the sea. So it was just pushing you out further and yes. further and further. Yes, yes, yes. The beach was very far away already. So I pushed my limits. I was swimming as hard as I can. Uh, then I realized that in 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes, I don't know how in 
I don't know how, in how many minutes I realized that, that uh, that's it. I have no uh, power left in my muscles. That, uh, what should I do now? And, I, 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 and then I realized that, 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 uh, that there's one thing that I haven't done. There's just one thing I should, should do. It, it might even sound funny or, or stupid back then, but I realized that I, I never uh, screamed for help. Because I I, re I, I remember that, that now I have just uh, maybe one minute I can stay above water because there were waves and wow. and uh, strong draft. And I raised my hands and I just yelled, help! And then I saw that, that the beach is so far away, there's no way some anyone can, can hear me. So then I re re remember that it's so unfair. I have a, like, come on, I have a brain tumor and I'm going to just drown here it right. doesn't doesn't, doesn't some logic <laughs> yeah I was, yeah i felt really betrayed so uh, so then i realized that there's only one thing i could do is just to uh the, uh, i i have the hope so it's i realized that it's really truth that the last thing but what what you have is your hope mm -hmm. i had that hope right there and that that hoping thing worked because then i realized that that that, that not from the other side, there was a one surfer coming on, on his surfing board, and he pulled me on his board, and he he saved me. Wow. So then I realized that, that life is a really really fragile thing. You can lose it just on any given day. Yeah. So this is one of the one of the things what I have learned, and the other thing I said I had two things. Other thing is that, that I'm really I, I hope that I'm depending less on my emotions, not only fear, but also some other fears. For example, uh, it's, it's, um, it's easy to be mad on some situation um, or to be angry. Mm -hmm. And I'm more okay with my own emotions that, that I, I'm, I'm able to witness now my emotions that day. Yes, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really angry here. Hey. Or, oh, it seems that I'm scared here. So, so while you maintain that ability, it's easier to make any kind of decisions, also business decisions, because, uh, because uh, we're, for example, right now we're competing with the biggest CRM players out there. We're competing with the Salesforce, for example, who's a big, really big company. And uh, without that ability, to uh, just calmly witness your fears, it's much easier to make any kind of decisions, no matter yeah. business or or personal, because yeah. it, it, without that, it's easy to uh, to uh, to start rationalizing that that that. Uh, it, uh, for example, let's have this business example that that uh, some about strategy or or product or or marketing. It's easy to rationalize yourself out from some decisions without realizing that it's not rational it's just fear mm -hmm. but if you if you're if you have better understanding what is your fear you can you can start saying that hey that's uh, actually that could be a good decision even though yeah. even though it, it might um, scare us it's, it's just fear yeah that's a really scary story Ermas. i appreciate you sharing that because that's you know, very personal stuff. But how do you make, right now, how do you make, how does that change your decisions? You know, right now, after your surgery, you just go right back to work. Some people may go, you know what? Life is short. I need to relax more. Or, or they may find that work is, is their cause. What made you, how do you, what decision have you made because you have realized that life is fragile? With my work? Yeah, or? with work or with your personal life. Um, like, do you do anything differently? Like, um, I'm not going to work past seven because I need to spend more time with my wife and kids. Or does that not come into your mind anymore? You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. I'll try to answer that. I, I don't want to say that, that it's my it's, it's meaning of my life. Uh, that's too big a uh, thing to put into that sentence. But... Uh, but if, uh, and uh, I don't think I'm capable of putting meaning of life into a sentence. But if, if I had to, just to mention some keywords. Yeah, not even was, meaning of life, uh, but you know, is there any decisions you thought of that maybe 
you made differently now because of your experience or maybe the earmuffs before you went through that drowning episode and the surgery you would have made a different decision um maybe yes but it, but, that, but uh there is one one thought or keyword mm -hmm. which i would use mm -hmm. um uh, it would be to have courage because uh with, uh, I really believe that that um, that, uh, that if you have courage, um, it's easier to live uh, fully that life that you really uh, desire. Mm -hmm. Because it's. Uh, Maybe before that, all of those things. Maybe I was wishing to have an easier life. It's easy to to wish for easier life, right. a more relaxed uh, life, or well, even a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But then somehow, because I realized that that, that uh, it could happen that your life is full of challenges and, and that, that, that easiness or or Getting e out easy, it's not. Um, it, it's it maybe sounds uh, easy, but there's no benefit in in easy life. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really hard to maybe uh, verbalize that. I see what you thought. mean. I see what you mean. So I, I started to realize that, that, that you actually get more gratification and uh, you feel more alive if you're kind of going through challenges and and overcoming than just kind of cruising along, type of thing. Yes, Is that right? it's, it's not. Yes, I don't, I don't mean that 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 uh, um, that you must only do the scary stuff. Right. But I realized that that, that uh, when there is fear coming from some uh, situation or from a business situation, mm -hmm. that's actually still a sign. It's it means that that's, there's something interesting inside that as well. Yeah. Otherwise, you you wouldn't have that fear. Yeah. yeah. So then you start investigating that. Is that it's just. Is it just a stupid thing to do, and that's why you are having that fear, or maybe it's a, it's a big thing you should uh, dis discover further, yeah. because uh, um, I be believe that, that that the other guys in pipe drive, even though um, they have not had their uh, brain surgeries, Timo had his back surgery during accelerator, which is another story, uh, another crazy story. We have all developed that attitude that that um, great decisions, best decisions are made with uh, with uh, not just rational thinking, but with uh, with some courage. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, so, Irmas, we talked about some of the low points, some tough points. Tell me about a proud moment, personal and business. I. Uh, I think uh, I, I still personally suck at uh, being uh, proud. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have had many internal discussions in Pipe Drive that, that, that uh, we should learn how to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Because I think that I remember when we launched Pipe Drive in the beta, uh, we thought that, that someone thought that maybe we should have a party. And then we thought that uh, maybe it's too early. We should have some customers first. Then we had mm -hmm. the first customers, which all that it's too early to celebrate because uh, they need to stop paying first. They are on free trial now. Mm -hmm. So when they start to pay, we thought that that's uh, twenty customers, is nothing. If we'll have hundred, that's something. Right. So when we had hundred, we thought that that hundred, that's nothing. We should have like five hundred. Then we had five hundred. Then we thought that that's nothing. We should have. 1,000, so I think the only uh, party we had back then was when we had our first 1,000 paying uh, customers. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's someone has to remind us, so usually that, hey, you, have, you, you just had a milestone right there, you should really be proud of that. So, so um, but accept, getting accepted to the angel pad was really a proud moment mm -hmm. for me. Um, also, the milestones like first hundred customers or first thousand customers, uh, we're going to reach ten thousand customers. Uh, we're really proud of those uh, 
Uh, yes. Why do you I, think it's so hard to celebrate? Um, this is a common theme. I when I talk to entrepreneurs, they say the same thing. I had this bottle of champagne when we hit our hundredth customer. Then when the hundredth customer came. I was like, well, we need the thousands customer. And the thousand customer mm -hmm. came, they want the 10,000th customer, and, and they just keep pushing it back. What makes it so hard to celebrate? Why? Uh, it's a really good question. I, I wish I had a very loud and clear answer uh, to that. Usually, Estonians say that, that, that uh, that's an Estonian habit. Uh, but obviously, it's not an Estonian thing. It's a very common thing, like I said, uh, among entrepreneurs. Um, one one way of uh, explaining it to be that you're you're in that business for some other things anyway. It's not about it's not about milestones. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. We are, for example. We are getting really happy. The, the, the emotion in our office is, is changing when we get some feedback from a customer. Mm -hmm. some, if, if we get a letter from a customer that, hey guys, I've tested like 100 different CRMs um, and believe that I, and, and she tells us that I believe I've seen them all, and now I start to use Pipedrive, and that has changed my life. And we were selling it two times more than we sold before. Yeah. This is these are the moments where we are truly happy when yeah. we reach those. These are the spontaneous spontaneous moments. These are the most important ones. So, mm -hmm. but when we reach those those milestones that, that so many customers, it's it's um, it's kind of nice. But actually, you you know that you're just that's just a milestone. Yeah. It's a journey. What counts, not the not the milestone. Yeah. So what's some feedback you've gotten from customers that's really helped shape the product? Because, I mean, obviously you were entrenched in sales, so you, you knew the issues, the pain, the problems. But what did customers tell you that made you shape uh, what it is today? One of our first dreams was to come up with a software which helps to, uh, to change a culture or keep some specific uh, culture um, uh, in those sales teams where Pipedrive is used. Mm -hmm. So when we got those first pieces of uh, feedback from even bigger customers, like customers with 50 users, and we asked from them like uh, um, say six months or uh, 12 months later that, that now after we have implemented Pipedrive, uh, What's your, I would say, what's your uh, retrospective or summary? Why you are using Pipedrive, mm -hmm. and what when the customer tells you that uh, actually we started using Pipedrive because we wanted to change our culture. We wanted our sales guys to understand what these their process are like, and we wanted every salesperson to understand what what's the best thing they could do every morning and mm -hmm. pipe drive really has changed that we're, we're all all like 50 of us are really clear what we are trying to, trying to achieve there Th these are the moments when you really understand that that uh, that uh, we're getting somewhere that that, that uh, this, this this dream is is uh, happening that it, it's possible to to change cultures with software that's mm -hmm. why we started to build pipe drive yeah I mean, because you had that pain early on, right? Where the software wasn't exactly the way you wanted it. Is that where the yeah. idea came out of? Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's how it started. We, we, we had, with that previous company, we had sales team. We had, uh, our team was maybe 20 or 25 uh, trainers and, and sales guys working together. And we had, uh, I think, third a really expensive CRM. Uh, I think we paid thirty five thousand dollars for wow. that suit. Um, significant amount, yeah. Yes, for a small company, uh, quite a significant. And uh, we did some re research before we bought that. It wasn't like it wasn't just signing up. 
it took, took it took months to implement that. Mm -hmm. So once we realized after implementation that some of us, um, me included, uh, for some reason were still not using it, uh, and we had our sales pipeline on the wall with uh, sticky notes. Mm. We think that that day that either. We are really, really stupid. <laughs> we have no clue how to buy software, which still maybe also was the case. Uh, or there is an um, opportunity in that market. It's just the, the ordinary uh, sales guys. Um, or they don't even have to be a sales guy. You just have some communication going on. You want to keep your eye on that. There's no way to visualize your... Uh, communications pipeline. Yeah. Uh, so we started from a scratch to design a product for the for the uh, for the user. As most of the CRMs are designed for the CEO and CFO, so they could get reports. But in order uh, to get those reports, the ordinary how to say ordinary the salesperson guys, they need to just f fill the forms. Uh, yeah. quite often and so they feel like a librarian or they they start, they tend to avoid CRMs because they are not doing any anything good uh, mm -hmm. for them and we feel that it shouldn't be like that it's, it, that, that sales software should be useful for the salesperson also it's like uh, uh, how come it's possible there are, there are hundreds of solutions out there and they, they are not actually thinking about salesperson yeah Many of them say that, that, that our software is easier, but that was the point. If there's no point of using it, the easiness is not really helping. It should be right. useful, not easy. Yeah. So it almost started it off as those post-it notes, and then that got converted into the the way it kind of looks. Because that's, I mean, obviously, I, I'm on pipe drive every day, and that's exactly how it is. You can kind of just slide things along the, you know, along the funnel. Yes, we, we had long debates. What should be, uh, what should be the first screen um, in PipeDrive when you log in? Should we have a dashboard or a list or, or um, some kind of reports or something? Then we realized that, that, that the dashboard is really not. Uh, the dashboard is a great thing to visit, but steering a dashboard is not getting you anywhere. Yeah. Uh, you can waste a lot of time steering a dashboard, so it should be something uh, more workable. So we yeah. felt so, and then we realized, that, hey, why not to have sales pipeline yeah. as a first screen? Because most of the sales meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings or bigger meetings, they start from the same question: Hey guys, what's in our pipeline? Yeah, that's how you start your day yes. as well. That, that where I am at with my leads. Yes. So, Marissa, I have one more question. I appreciate your time. Before I ask it, tell people about PipeDrive. Tell people what's exciting now. Where can they find it? You can find PipeDrive uh, www.pipedrive.com. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you actually don't have to be a salesperson to use it. If you have a... Um, if you are using email and phone or any communication tools uh, for your work and uh, at some days feel that, that you want to be more organized, yeah. uh, maybe PipeDrive is a tool for you. What's the strangest use you've, you've seen or strange or interesting company? Um, or if you can't say the company, the kind of company? There are... Um, Personal use cases, sometimes uh, uh, users tweet how they are using PipeDrive. There mm -hmm. was one one, uh, one woman who was using it to find a new boyfriend. So really? She had, she's pipeline for that with stages. Um, yeah, it's probably the... the now I'm curious what stages she had. <laughs> like first date, <laughs> marriage material. <laughs> I, never, I never saw the stages. So. That's interesting. I think I, I wrote back to her that, that what are your stages, but she never res responded. So what's exciting it. with PipeDrive now? What are you working on lately? 
we are launching uh, Android and iOS app uh, okay. right now uh, because our users, uh, some of them are really mobile. And also, we are launching uh, Mailbox right now during uh, next uh, weeks. We've been working on that. That's a lot. Uh, year now already. Yes, we we, we realize that, that as uh, if you are uh, communicating with others, then uh, CRM should be built um, around your communication tool. Mm -hmm. So we we built that mail thing right into the pipe drive. You'll see it soon. Yeah. So, Ernest, my last question is this. I know when we um, sent you some of the questions, and one of the questions is about the proudest moment. We talked about the, the business side of it. And on the, on the personal side of it, you said one of the biggest, proudest moments is obviously your kids, right? Yes. What, what do you see with your kids now um, that you will do the same or different? Because they're obviously going to grow up in a lot, in a different environment from you were in a non capitalist time and now they're growing up in California. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your, your thoughts on that. How they are going to uh, be different? Yeah, or the same. You know, from your experience, how you will you'll kind of bring some of the old country to them and oh, okay, Com yeah. to compare the cultures. Yeah, growing up. Mm, I think one of the maybe one of the biggest differences I can see already right now is that, that as they go to a Waldorf school here, uh, which is um, the school is really encouraging uh, uh, young people to communicate with uh, uh, and to really um, yeah to so express your thoughts really and uh, plus even beside that California anyway has this uh, culture saying hello to a stranger and very it's easy to uh, start a conversation with a stranger in a store and that, so our, our kids have learned to really how to express their thoughts and that my youngest kid has no problem going to a stranger and to start to talk uh, with him which is not a very Estonian way of approaching life so hmm. we're, we're, uh, I'm going in July back to Estonia mm -hmm. for a month with uh, our kids and uh, it might be surprising for them uh, when they start saying hello to everyone <laughs> and and uh, in uh, Estonia it's not very common to say yeah. hello to a stranger yeah. here here it is so that's a thing right right there what's one of your favorite parts and best parts about that you've started pipe drive uh, favorite parts yeah. Uh, for family or for myself? For, for yourself. Family. For yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many things. Um, one is that, uh, which I've already spoke about, is that, that uh, this is constant learning how to uh, make decisions uh, without letting your fears affect that to think really big mm -hmm. um, all the time to, to do stuff that others um, uh, have not done before. Um, yes, uh, uh, thinking big, uh, uh, even coming here uh, during 2011 from uh, Estonia and then to move our families also uh, last year, yeah. I think we, we moved uh, four guys, but with them we actually moved like 16 or 17 because of family families. Right. So, so um, I've started to enjoy um, actually big decisions or or to live with uncertainties that that, that it's it sort to feel more natural that it, it's it's normal. Uh, that you don't know what happens next. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to make many mistakes with the pipe drive, and mm. uh, and as a private person, I'm going to make many mistakes as well. Mm. That, that, that uncertainty uh, is a very natural thing, and then learning to um, to live this uncertain life 
CRM market is very crowded market. It's not yeah. much crowded market. Uh, right. Some of the some of the VCs, uh, uh, friends, entrepreneurs, customers, even I think that that were crazy. Why we want to start a uh, uh, company yeah. in such a crowded uh, market? But yeah. it's, it just seems to be a good, a good idea. Yeah. We're, we're we're okay with that risk. Yeah. So this risk taking seems to be a yeah. much much cooler now than it was years ago. Yeah, I mean, Irma, I'm in awe of what you have overcome personally, professionally, what your team has done with Pipe Drive. I want to be the first one to thank you so much for for sharing your story with uh, with all of us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah.